Hello everyone, my name is Ankur and I'm going to talk about the changing nature of institutions due to technology and the unforeseen journey the humanity would take in the times to come. But let me start with a very interesting story which happened in the December of 2019. I was among the many protesters who were at the cusp of revolution. As with every protester on site, I had my own reasons and my own will to be a part of it. I would every day travel for 40 kilometers with my backpack in the Delhi Metro to reach the protest sites. As it were to happen, I would pack my lunch and everything I needed to sustain the gut-wrenching cold of New Delhi. The first day of the protests are always weird, by the way. You try to find familiar faces, people to talk to, and even make a few friends. While I was on the site, an idea struck me. Let me just go and talk to the police officers who were at the site. And I know it sounds so weird. And since I had biscuits in my bag and a near not so dangerous face, I was able to become friends with them. And then I started my gossiping sessions with a couple of police officers to know their perspective and what was their agenda to be at the protest site. And I suddenly became part of their clan by the fourth day and started exchanging messages on WhatsApp. We would discuss all sorts of things, from friends to family to other protesters. Apart from the police officers, I managed to also become friends with few of my fellow protesters on site and I was added to their WhatsApp group as well. Without realizing much about what's happening, probably because I'm not the smartest when it comes to social cues, I was suddenly able to get the perspective of two stakeholders who were at the crosshairs in one of the largest protests in the history of independent India. I would get general updates, feedbacks on the events of the day and the road ahead and any news which they seem necessary. Being part of those WhatsApp group made me realize a couple of things about the human journey of protests, of dissents, and how technology is facilitating a big part of it through mobilization, information, and advocacy. If we take a bird's eye view of the human history, we will encounter that there is a specific reason why we could dominate the animal kingdom. We could dominate because probably we could gossip like I did. And it is this a great ability to gossip that has made us the wise ones. That has made us who we are today, the homo sapiens. What we term here as gossip refers to the exchange of ideas and our reaction to those ideas. So gossiping was first of the many things that we learned and we made sure that we carry it in our genes and pass it on to the coming generations. Exchange of information has been crucial for our survival, as you may know. But how this exchange of information created system? This exchange of ideas led to the creation of institutions like marriage, religion, democracy, that has helped us build a system that could sustain us. These institutions provided us with much needed rigor to function in a system that could benefit both the stakeholder and the non-stakeholder. Our society time and again has tried to dwell into aspects which creates and procreates a newer and a better system. Our government systems are not just the result of the ideas of today, but they are also the result of the ideas of our past. So when they evolve, they also have a retrospective thinking and analysis attached to them, as what we call in policy the path dependency approach. But how is technology changing the world around us? Like, how is it relevant to protests? Lately, we observe that there is a diminishing effect and we have technology to equip that effect. It has not made us, it has not just made us express things the way we want, but also create systems which are relevant to our times. The system today have made information a widespread phenomenon and that has enabled us to question the entire paradigm of systems at large. We, at this moment, are creating more data than we ever did in human history. Technology is not just changing the way we interact, but it has also changed the way we respond and express. So by Tuesday, before you go to office, 
we would have created as much data as we ever did from the beginning of humankind till 2003. There are pieces of information lying around us, and now the onus is on us to make sense of it. We have so much of information and so many devices to support that exchange of information that it is very hard to ignore. To put it in context, in 1960, out of every 40 people, we had just one tech device. But by 2005, we were even one person, one device. By 2020, we had four devices being owned by a single person. Therefore, there would be more channels that could equip us with information. Today, platforms are chasing data over profits. There's going to be 1 trillion chips being manufactured every year. Our five senses are going to be acquired by machines. As I call it, from Internet of Things, we will be moving towards Internet for everything. But what is really changing? What has, what has all of this to do with information? Because there is an information revolution. And in this information revolution, the power lies with those who create and spread that information. Government and policymakers around the world are trying to adjust to and recapture this revolution which is happening online. As you may know, our society has been subject of manipulation for hundreds of years. This manipulation created systems of tyranny and suffering for the masses. It made the powerful believe in the idea that we, that the revolution would be suppressed and manipulation would happen. And it is that same manipulation which made us trust the powerful. And what is this role of social media, this WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter of the world? Because the times have changed. In the past, we weren't able to find what was happening a few blocks away. And today, we have people tweet to us about it. I was made part of those WhatsApp groups, which gave me information, the very information which is not out there in the media, but it is out there in a personalized manner on my WhatsApp. When Czechoslovakia was invaded in 1968 by the Soviet Union, we didn't know what was going on, on the ground at least. The television cameras couldn't get in. But today, we have all the required information to know and understand any crisis which we would be facing as a human society. And due to this tectonic shift, what happens in these emerging countries is that all of a sudden, because of unprecedented connectivity, everybody is empowered. And God knows what's going to happen. Because they have grown without doubt. Rather with choices, with different voices, and with an ability to choose among them by exercising some critical thinking. And it is this critical thinking that has enabled us to resent as well. There is a growing intellectual consensus that the world is sailing into uncharted territory, a realm marked by authoritarianism, shallow populism, and extremism. We have diminishing faith in our institutions, which bound us, and therefore, there needs to be some questions which needs to be answered on priority. Just as an example, in 2015, the world was changing for a lot, by the way. But in 2015, shortly after Donald Trump announced that he was running for president, polls found out that only 19% of Americans trusted the government always or most of the time. A Princeton study that looked at 1,779 different policy issues found that economic elites and business groups had substantial impact on U.S. policy, while citizens and mass-based interest groups had little or none. So we can fairly assume that there is a divide which exists. But how would this technology, democracy, and this access to information going to serve us? How would it evolve our systems? We know democracy as a form of government which gives more freedom to express. But how we know democracy as a representative one is set to change as a participatory one. Democracy is a work in progress. It's neither complete nor absolute. Technology has enabled us and made us powerful enough to question the system, 
It has made us question the forms of government and our leaders at a much more increased pace. Therefore, if the French Revolution were to happen today, it would happen at a much faster pace. Disentangling the complex forces that are driving these changes can help us better understand what ails democracies today and potentially guide us towards compelling solutions. The democracy is set to evolve. The forms and functions of manipulations and the systems of manipulations are going to evolve. Information is much more widespread and accessible. We are now capable of questioning the premise of information we are being supplied with. It will evolve our revolutions. It will correct our systems of education, of poverty, of healthcare, and many others. It will make us debate, discuss, and dissent the arguments which we are presented with. We will have informed participation and not just participation. Today, we are overwhelmed by the supply of tools to correct things around us. Systems can survive with or without technology, but they will evolve only when we have technology that will enable participation. It is the need of the art to democratize our democracy and create better value systems to combat global challenges. And this speed of disruption, this acceleration in the speed of disruption is bound to create chaos. But that would be a very beautiful chaos to participate in. Today, we are non-violently transformative rather than being violently revolutionary. The idea of revolutions have changed. Now, it is not just about taking power from one small group of people and then giving it to the other group. Institutions cannot be imposed on people from the top, but they will be built from bottom up, one interaction at a time. We need better systems to be put up in place through those information channels. Censorship will be wiped out and government will be exposed. More and more people are disclosing information to create an open society, to create an open future. Technology, particularly social media, has the power to make institutions open, to create broader consensus. We are now equipped with a platform to support that voice. We have the potential for more Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter campaign. We are the open source generation, and we have promised ourselves that we will strive towards keeping the tradition of gossip alive to create a better world. Because I, for one, went to that protest site just to be added to those WhatsApp group probably, because that led me to much more information than I would have had by watching television. And that's the power of social media to equip someone like me to understand what's happening out, to get those ground information. And it is the technology which has enabled that. And today, I can proudly say that I would be able to change those systems around me because of those on-ground information. And as I say, as I conclude, technology is beautiful. It would accelerate and change systems. But it is us who are going to do that by being participation, by being participants of that great revolution, because we shape the world we live in every single day through the tools we create and we use. We paint the picture every day with the brush of technology to help to use technology to revolt, to protest, to create, to debate, to dissent, and also to help. Thank you so much.